So let's start with a really easy inequality, just to show you what I mean. First, we're going to recall what an inequality is. So we're going to talk about, for instance, the inequality x uh, greater than 3. What does this mean? This means that the variable x is not equal to a number. It's not just 5 or 6. x is a whole range of numbers. It can be really infinity numbers, right? Because what we're saying is, since it's greater than 3, we're saying that x can be 4 or 5 or 6 or 7 or 8, but also the numbers in between, like x can be 4.5, x can be 3.012. As long as it's bigger than 3, notice there's no equal sign. If there's an equal sign under the inequality, then you would have to include 3. Any number bigger than 3, 3.01, 5.79, and so on, that is what x can be equal. It's a whole range of values. So in order to graph that, x is greater than 3, what we do is we go to number 3 on the number line up here, and we put an open circle. The open circle means that, you know, obviously 3 is the number we care about, but we're not including the number 3 in the solution. And what we do is we shade everything to the right of this on the number line. So if you can see that, what it means is, everything bigger than 3, 4, 5, 6, on to infinity, and all of the numbers in between, like here's 3.5, here's 4.5, uh, and so on. The open circle means we are not counting the number 3 in our solution. All right, let's take a look at another really simple one. Let's say we have x is greater than or equal to 2. So this is the exact same thing, except we're also including the number 2 in the range of x, because it's greater than 2, or it's equal to 2 as well. So we represent that by finding the number 2 in the number line, and we put a solid dot in place instead of an open circle, and then we shade everything to the right. You can put a little arrow at the end if you like, showing that you're going on and on to infinity. So this open circle means we're not including the number 3, everything to the right of it though. This closed circle means we're including everything to the right of 2 and also including the number 2. So if we had the inequality x uh, is less than 1, for instance, that would mean everything smaller than 1. So it would be 0, negative 1, negative 2, and so on to the left of 1. So we go to the graph, to our number line, we find the number 1, which is right here. It's less than, but it's not equal to 1, so we put an open circle here, and we shade everything to the left. All of these numbers. So all of these negative numbers, and also the numbers between 0 and 1 here, but of course not including the number 1 itself, because it's an open circle like this. So open circle versus closed circle is very important uh, there. Now we have one more just to kind of wrap it up and just kind of give you one of the really basic examples. What if we had um, x is less than or equal to negative 2? Less than or equal to negative 2. So first you find negative 2 on your graph. You see that it's less than or equal to. So we find negative 2. It's going to be a closed circle because it's also equal to negative 2. And we're saying the, num the variable x can be less than or equal to that. So it means we shade to the left. So basically what we're going to do for all of these inequality problems is I'm, this is just kind of a basic review of what an inequality is. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start solving inequalities where you have to move things to the left and to the right hand side. But the goal is at the end you want to end up in an equation. You want to end up with x equals 5 or x equals negative 2. Here you want to end up with x is less than or equal to negative 2. Or you want to end up with x is less than 1. So you want to move everything to the left, everything to the right, so you have a variable by itself. And then once you get the answer, you graph it. So you basically the answers to all of these things are going to be ranges of values. So that's the difference between an inequality and an equation. An equation means they're equal. There's one solution, generally, for, for a simple linear equation like this. But for inequalities, there's a whole range of solutions. So just to give you an example of, of, of one of the very simple ones, let's say we had the problem um, x minus 7 is greater than negative 5. So if x minus 7 is greater than negative 5. So what you do first of all is you just pretend that this is an equal sign right here. You pretend it's an equation. So if this was x minus 7 equals negative 5, what would you do? You want x by itself, so you have to to uh, get rid of the 7. How do you do it? Because you, you, the way you do it is you do the opposite of the negative. You add 7 to both sides. So what you would get when you add 7 to the left is just x will be by itself because 7 and negative 7 will add to 0. On the right, you'll have negative 5, and you'll have to add the 7 to it. So what do you get on the right-hand side? x is greater than. What do you do? What you get when you add these? You subtract them, and the sign goes with this one. You'll get a 2. So this is not saying that x is equal to 2. This is saying that x is a range of values bigger than 2. 
So you go up here to represent the solution as a graph. You go and you find the two on the number line. You put an open circle because it's not greater than or equal, it's just greater than two. And then you shade every number larger than this. So what this means, it's very important in math to understand what you're doing and what the solutions mean. What it means is, just like for an equation, you had one solution. You can take that solution and stick it back in the equation and show that that solution is correct, that that, one's, that, that makes the equation equal, right? With the inequality, what we're saying is any number bigger than two actually makes this inequality work. So you can check it. Let's take the number three, because that's bigger than two, right? What we're saying is any number bigger than two should work. So let's put it in here. What is three minus seven? Three minus seven, if you think about it, three minus seven is negative four. And my question to you, is negative four greater than negative five? Now it might be a little bit weird to say that, but if you look at negative four, and here's negative five. Negative four actually is larger than negative five. They're both negative, so you have to think about it a little bit. But negative four is actually larger. Now if we pick a number even bigger, let's say, let's pick 10, because that's also bigger than two. Let's put 10 minus seven. What is 10 minus seven? 10 minus seven is three. Is three larger than negative five? Of course, three is over here, negative five is over here. So that would satisfy as well. So you see, as you keep plugging numbers larger and larger and larger in, it's gonna get more and more and more greater on this side, so it's always gonna work. Now what happens when you put the number zero in here? Because that's not gonna work, it's not greater than two. Let's put zero in. Zero minus seven is negative seven. Is negative seven greater than negative five? Whoops, I put a question mark. No, it's not. If you look over here, negative seven will be over here. That's definitely not bigger than negative five. So you see, when you get the inequality down to the end, you're getting a range of values, and, and those values are what would work when you put them back into the inequality to begin with, uh, and so on. That's what the idea is here. So let's do one more simple one before we move on to a little more complicated ones. What if we had uh, two times the variable t is greater than six? So you basically just, in your mind, envision or pretend that this is an equal sign. What would you do? Well, I would divide this. I would have 2t less than 6. I would divide the left by 2. And if I do that, I have to divide the right by 2. And I do that so that this cancels. So I would get t on the left. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So what I would do if I wanted to graph this is I'd have to find the number 3, which is over here. I'd have to put an open circle because it's not less than or equal to. It's just less than and then all numbers to the left of three. So I would go to my graph here and I would shape everything to the left. So any of these numbers to the left of three, but not including three, would work. So just pick one, let's stick a zero in. Zero is less than three, right? So two times zero is zero, that is less than six, that works. Um, what if you put in negative one? That's less than negative one times two. That's gonna give you negative two, that's also less than six, and so on. But if you go the other way too far, let's put 10 in. 10 is definitely not less than three, so it shouldn't work. 10 times two is 20, that is not less than six. Now let's look at the special point. What happens when you set it equal to three? Two times three is six, right? So you say six and six, but notice it's an inequality. What is on this side has to be less than what's on the right, but six is not less than six, six is equal to six. So the number three itself is not part of the solution because when you put three in here, it doesn't work because it, six is equal to six, that's not less than. That's why we have an open circle here because the number three doesn't work for the solution. So as we go through here, we're gonna solve a few more problems, getting practice, and graphing every one of these solutions on the number line. All right, for our next problem, let's say we have negative five x is less than 10. Negative five x is less than 10. So you treat it like an equation. Now what you need to do is you need to divide both sides by what? By negative five to get it by itself. So what we'll have is, just to make it 100% clear, let me rewrite this so I don't kind of, kind of mess up the first thing that I wrote down here, the problem statement. Let me take this away for right now. We'll take that away from right now. So what we're gonna do then is we're going to divide the left side by negative five, and when we do that also, we have to divide the right side by negative five. Now, if you remember back at the beginning of the lesson, I told you that solving inequalities was exactly the same as solving equations. I mean, you use the same rules, except for one thing you have to remember, and this is that thing. When you divide both sides of this inequality, or if you multiply both sides of this inequality by a negative number, any negative number, then what you have to do is this inequality sign, you have to flip directions. 
All right, that's a that's a general rule. I could go into why you have to do that, but honestly, it's not worth it's not worth doing because ultimately there's a, there's a reason, and it has to do with the number line and what happens when you divide by a negative number. But the bottom line is, every time you solve an inequality, if you divide by negative five, you have to flip the direction of the arrow. If it's a less than or equal to, then you would flip it to greater than or equal to. If you divide by negative two, you're gonna flip the sign of that arrow. If you divide by negative 17, you'll flip the sign of that arrow. If you divide by negative 0.5, you're gonna flip the sign of that arrow, right? Now here's the thing, because division and multiplication are related, right? The same thing happens when you multiply by a negative number. So if I have to multiply this by negative 10, I'm gonna flip that arrow. If I'm gonna multiply this by negative 1 half, I'm gonna flip that arrow. So it's a very simple rule to remember. Anytime you multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number, you flip the sign of this arrow. If you don't do it, you will get the wrong answer. So what do we have? We have the negative fives canceling with the negative five. So on the left, you have x greater than now. What's 10 divided by negative five? That's negative two. So this is the final answer. Uh, x is greater than negative two. So the way you graph it is you go up and find negative two. It's not greater than or equal to, it's just greater than. So you put an open circle because we're not including the number negative two in our solution and we shade everything to the right. That's the graph of this inequality. All right, what if we had the inequality negative t over two greater than three halves? There's a lot of different ways to do this. I can think of two ways right now, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get rid of this. Um, let's do it like this, three halves. We're gonna do it like this. We're gonna take the left-hand side of this guy, since it's, we're multiplying by negative one, we have a negative one half here, essentially. What we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply by negative two over one right here, and when we do it to the left-hand side, we also have to multiply the right by negative two over one. Why are we multiplying by negative two over one? Well, first of all, we're multiplying by negative so we can kill the negative sign. We don't want any negative signs on the left, and two over one will cancel with the two because the two will cancel with the two, so the only thing you'll have left when the negatives cancel is a t on the left-hand side, but when we do this multiplication, we must flip the sign of this inequality. So we'll have less than, and what do we have here? The two cancels with the two, but now we have a negative, times three means negative three. This is the final answer. It works exactly the same. This is exactly what you would do if you had an equal sign here to get this by itself. But of course, with an equal sign, you don't have to flip the direction of anything. Here we had to flip this direction. So to graph it, we go find negative three and we put an open circle because it's not equal to negative three, it's just less than negative three and we shade everything to the left. All right, that's basically it. Let's do one more. Since these are so small, I think I can fit it on this board. What if we had 3x minus 1 is greater than or equal to negative 4? Now the only difference between this and the other equations, obviously there's a, there's a negative 1 term here, is now we have greater than or equal to. So it doesn't change how you do it. If, if it's greater than or equal to, you just have to carry that sign down throughout. And of course, if you have to flip the direction, because if you divide by a negative or multiply by a negative, then you'll flip it to the other, the other direction with an equal sign under it. So what we do now is we say, what do we have to do first? If this were an equal sign, we would get rid of the one, so we would add one, so it would be three x greater than or equal to, we add one to the left, we add one to the right, what is negative four plus one? Negative four plus one, negative three on the right. Make sure you understand, add one, add one, all right? And then what do we do to get rid of the x? Well, we have to divide by three, so it would be x, greater than or equal to negative three on the right, we have to divide by that three. We divide the left by, it, by three, killing it. We divide the right by three, and what you get at the end of the day is x greater than equal to, what do we have? Negative one here. This is the final answer, greater x greater than or equal to negative one. So now to plot this, we find negative one, and we put a solid dot because it's greater than or equal to negative one, and then we shade everything to the right. All of these numbers, including the number one, negative one, will be correct if you stick them into this value of x, it will satisfy this inequality. In fact, if you put negative one in here, because we're saying it's greater than or equal to negative one, if you put negative one in here, what will you get? Three times negative one is negative three. Negative three minus one is negative four. Negative four, is that greater than or equal to negative four? Yes, because it's equal to, which is allowed in this inequality. So the answers that you get you should be able to put them back in and verify that they are correct. All right, what if we had the inequality 
y greater, I'm sorry, less than or equal to 7 times y minus 24. Now, first of all, just like with equations and inequalities, you'll see all kinds of variables running around. Sometimes you'll see x, sometimes you'll see y, sometimes you'll see t, sometimes you'll see a or b or w, it doesn't matter. You treat it all the same. It's exactly the same. You're trying to find out what values of y work with this inequality. So what you do, first of all, is you have to collect all the y terms on one side, all the other stuff on the other side, and that's what you need. So in order to, to get this done, how do you get this 7y over here? Well, this is a positive 7y, so to move it over, you have to subtract it. So on the left, it'll be y minus 7y. On the right-hand side, it'll be 0 here because you subtracted 7y, and you'll have the negative 24 that's still there. So we subtract 7y from the left, we subtract 7y from the right, that makes it 0. And what do we have when we do this subtraction? 1 minus 7, you should know now, is negative 6y, and it's going to be negative 24. Right, like this. So what's the final answer? To get y by itself, what do we do? We have to divide by a negative. Remember, divide by a negative means we have to flip that sign. So when we divide by the negative 6, we'll have y by itself. This sign, at this point, flips around. Notice we have an inequality with an equal sign, so it flips the other direction. And what is it going to be over here? Negative 24 divided by negative 6. So we divide by negative 6, divide by negative 6, and the final answer will be positive, because negative divided by negative is positive, 6 times 4 is 24. So it's y greater than or equal to 4. Now, to um, plot this guy, we go find the number 4. We put a solid circle because it's greater than or equal to, and all of the values to the right of that is what we have. So 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. If you stick them in here, you will find that this inequality is satisfied. All right, now we have one more that we're going to do in this lesson. What if we have 2 x, whoops, not 2x, 2 minus x, that's what I was trying to write, less than 4 plus x. So it's the same sort of deal with equations, right? You have some x's on the left, some x's on the right. You got to move the x's over here, you got to move the numbers over here. So what do we do? We're going to subtract x to move it over here. So what do we have? 2 minus x from here, but we're going to subtract x, so we'll have another minus x, then we'll have a, the less than sign, then we'll have a 4. When we subtract x from the right, then this becomes 0, because x minus x is 0. We subtract x, x from the left, we have written it out here, and then the next step we'll say it's minus 2x less than 4, just like this. Now we have to take the numbers, the number 2, and move it to the right by what? This is a positive 2, so we'll have to, to subtract uh, 2 like this, whoops, not equal to in this case, we'll have 4 minus 2 on the right. So we subtract 2 from the left, it disappears, subtract 2 from the right, and what we have is negative 2x, less than 4 minus 2 is 2. Right? Now what do we do? In order to get x by itself, we divide by negative 2, so you remember we divide by negative, that means we flip the sign of this arrow, and it'll be on the right, 2 divided by negative 2. On the left we divide by negative 2, it disappears, on the right we divide by negative 2, and what we get is x greater than negative 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1, positive divided by negative is negative. So what we have is x greater than negative 1, but not equal to negative 1. So we put an open circle here, and then we shade everything to the right. Open circle at negative 1, shade everything to the right. So just to pick an example if you want, notice we're saying x is greater than negative 1, so we're saying 0 should work, right? Just as this single example to put in here, 2 minus 0, that gives us 2. 4 plus 0 gives you 4. 2 is less than 4, it works. And so you can pick numbers on the, uh, on the left and on the right and just kind of make sure. But essentially this defines a range of values that work when you use them and plug them back into your initial inequality. So that's a really good uh, overview of solving inequalities in what we call one variable. Right? Because later on we'll have inequalities that have two variables, and we'll get to that later on down the road. But these skills that you're learning here are absolutely essential for you to understand how to do more complicated types of problems. So follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue solving inequalities, and we'll make the, the problems slightly more complicated along the way. But essentially you'll be doing the same things as we're doing here with just a few more steps when the problems get a little bit more challenging. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.